Good morning, everybody, and thank you for being here today. Uh, we're joined by my colleagues, uh, Minister Nicolaitis, the Minister of Advanced Education, as well as Minister Glubis, the Minister of Service, Alberta. I'd also like to extend a, a big thank you to Billy Rideout with Exergy Solutions here. And we've been learning a little bit about Exergy Solutions uh, just before this announcement and some of the amazing work that they have done. The innovative work that they're doing here, 3D printing metal, building ventilators in this health crisis. That's the pivot that oil and gas service companies, innovative companies have done across Alberta. And Exergy Solutions is a perfect example of a company with innovative minds that are entrepreneurial, technologically driven, that have found solutions in a very fast period of time. I'm really looking forward to hearing more from Billy on that one there. I also want to thank uh, Sandy Gilbert, the CEO of Intergen and chair of the National Angel Capital Organization for joining us here for this announcement. Now, three weeks on the job. I'm the new Minister of Jobs, Economy and Innovation. So what we're trying to do here is reset a little bit from our a media perspective, what we're doing on our recovery plan. Some of those elements I just want to reframe for you so you understand the context of why we're making this announcement here today. So with our recovery plan, we've announced already $75 million over three years for our investment and growth plan. And in that 75 million, we have $6 million annually for Invest Alberta. Now, Invest Alberta, we're, we've got our amazing board that we've got now in place there. We're some business leaders, community leaders with relationships here in Alberta, nationally, internationally. This is a new business development tool. What we found was that the economy of today is growing so quickly. It is growing so fast and it's ever changing where the conventional government model of having trade offices couldn't keep up with the pace of growth that we're finding across the world. So we in Alberta need to innovate to make sure we can keep up with the pace of industry, keep up with the job creators, keep up with the people dreaming up the next big idea. Because right now our stock market is full of companies with big values, valuable more than traditional companies, based off of ideas that they've taken and grown and commercialized in scale faster than money, many of us could ever have imagined even 10 and 15 years ago. So we need to make sure that government can keep up with the pace of small businesses, we're already in engagement with various players across Alberta on how we're going to work with them as a tool for them. Government's not going to be the ones that grow us out of this pandemic and get Alberta moving forward. It's going to be Alberta companies. And how do we best position government resources to support Albertans that are doing this innovative work like Exergy Solutions here in Alberta? How do we help them grow to become an international brand, national brand? How do we make sure that we can connect them to the world using the resources and the intellectual capital we have here in the province of Alberta? You're also going to be seeing more and more announcements coming out from us, this, from our government. We have an announcement today. You're going to see an announcement tomorrow. You're going to see more announcements next week on various elements of our sector strategy. But we wanted to lead off with the announcement that we have here today around innovation, technology, because every company in this growing fast paced world has built in technology. That is the key. That's the juice that gets things going. That's what makes things fast. Now we in Alberta have a little ways to go on this front. We need to make sure that we're at the forefront of intellectual property, make sure that we're at the forefront of taking research and ideas and being able to turn them into businesses and jobs faster than anybody else in the world, not just Canada, but anybody else in the world. We have to, that has to be our standard. That has to be our benchmark. Now, many of our forms and, and approaches from post-secondary institutions to government have been built up in our amazing practices that were there for a traditional economy. But we need to keep up with a fast growing economy that's gonna grow us out of this pandemic and keep Alberta moving forward. And I'm really looking forward to the detailed work that you're gonna hear about how we're gonna do this, how we're gonna put our flag in the ground here in Alberta to let the world know that we're here to compete. You have other provinces like BC, Ontario, they're moving in this direction. And some, of them might, and some may say that they're ahead of us right now in some of these areas, but just watch the province of Alberta. We're making a dedicated move towards this. We're gonna move faster than any other jurisdiction in the country to get this done in real time with our business partners. So with that, I'd like to really welcome and thank Billy for, for hosting us here today. I'm looking forward to hearing a little bit more about your story about what you guys did in this pandemic and pivoted and got something done faster than I ever could have appreciated you could do something. So with that, I'd wanna welcome Billy.
Thank you, Doug. Um, yeah, Billy Rideout here, president of XRG Solutions. We have an interesting place. Uh, often I refer to this place as uh, Disneyland for engineers. Uh, we, we, we bring the youth, uh, very skilled workers. Uh, Alberta has tons of skilled workers. Uh, we we uh, gather them into an environment where they can actually use technology and get things done. So we have from 3D printing to virtual reality to augmented reality to 3D scanning. And essentially, the, the equipment is, allows them to kind of be creative and dream. So when you talk about the ventilators, for example, which has got a lot of press recently, well, it was something that society needed. And in the span of about three months, we went from nothing to designing uh, a ventilator. Uh, and this is something that we've never done before. We typically play in the energy sector. Designing the ventilator, making three different prototypes, getting Health Canada approval, and then and creating, uh, fabricating uh, approved units for uh, Alberta Health Services. So that's, you know, if I could say one word that exemplifies Exergy is agility. So we, we love to move fast. I, I, I agree with the minister that, that Alberta needs to move fast and needs to move faster. Uh, the innovation, you know, innovation is a, is a cultural change as well. It's not just, we talk a little bit about intellectual property. Innovation requires uh, people to be bold, uh, people to want to be creative and bold and take risks, uh, fail fast, fail cheap, uh, and, and look at what society needs. And, and, you know, in the case of Ventilator, that was the case. Right now, we're looking at our energy sector, which we've been very close to the energy sector. It's been a core uh, business for us. That's it is our core business. We're working on projects here uh, from el that eliminate tailings ponds, uh, you know, drastic uh, basically more economical ways of recovering the oil sands, uh, greener, uh, reduced greenhouse gases, uh, clean tech. And, and we welcome small businesses into our tent. Uh, so essentially this is a space where it's open to people, uh, small businesses, they want to get a prototype to market, uh, they can come here, we'll help them. And, and it's not easy to, uh, to set up a business and build a product. Uh, the company has enormous uh, growth potential. We've effectively doubled in size every year over the last three years. Uh, we're poised for growth. Uh, we want to grow and be a major part in the economy in Alberta, to, in a major part in this transformation. Well supported, a great ecosystem. I think, you know, starting points, um, people. Alberta has lots of skilled people. And at many demographics, it could be from uh, young, like highly skilled technical professionals, uh, seasoned mentors that maybe were executives in the oil and gas sectors. Some of them have actually joined our team. So they, they've learned the hard, the hard lessons. Um, and they're here to coach us and help us be agile, but also not make any big mistakes so that we can grow responsibly and, and, and eliminate risk. The other part of the ecosystem is agencies, uh, both provincial and federal agencies. Uh, provincially, Alberta Innovates has been uh, a massive supporter of Exergy. Uh, we've we've uh, participated in a program called DICE, which is Di Digital Innovation and Clean Energy. Uh, on that project, we're using things like virtual reality and augmented reality uh, to accelerate innovation and, and to create like what you call digital twins. Um, that's a, a, a big opportunity area, especially since uh, Alberta has a lot of CAD, skilled CAD professionals. Uh, another area that we're working on with Alberta Innovates is uh, the Grand Challenge, which this is an important one for the province. You know, I, the stereotype uh, when I look at Canada or, or, or national animals, the beaver. You know, the beaver goes and it cuts down a tree, right, and the, and the job is done, right. In Canada, sometimes we ship logs, you know, out of the country. We shouldn't be doing that. We should be adding value. You know, we should be continually adding value and getting the most out of the resources. So when you look at things like our energy sector and the oil sands, let's extract the carbon fiber from, from our asphalt teens. It high, grades, it high grades the oil. We get better value for that product. It's a staple industry that we have. And then we have a byproduct. And you know what? Carbon fiber, we have uh, uh, 3D printers here that print in carbon fiber. So it starts to then tie it all together into the manufacturing sector. So. Uh, you know, great ecosystem, uh, ripe for growth, and um, I'm really looking forward to the future and, and what we can do to contribute to the growth and the recovery of the province.
Well, thank you, Billy, for walking us through a little bit of what exciting work you're doing here at Exergy. Uh, my name is Nate Glubish. I'm the Minister of Service Alberta, and uh, I just am excited to be here with Minister Schweitzer and Minister Nicolaitis to talk a little bit about technology and innovation in Alberta. I've said this before, I'll say it again. Technology is not just an industry. It is the future of every industry. And for Alberta to reach its fullest potential, uh, especially on an economic scale, we must have a strong technology sector. Uh, that's why I'm so excited to be working with Minister Schweitzer and uh, as well as uh, Minister Nicolaitis to ensure that Alberta becomes the destination of choice for innovators and inventors to come and develop their ideas, to start businesses, to create jobs and to attract investment. These efforts form an important part of the Alberta Recovery Plan and our efforts to give Albertans confidence in the future of our economy. Before I was elected as an MLA, I was a venture capital investor. And in that time, I invested in many Alberta-based technology companies, helping them to grow, uh, helping them to attract more capital, helping them to commercialize their ideas and export them all around the world. At the core of every technology company is its intellectual property. Whether it be a trade secret or uh, a series of patents, this intellectual property or IP represents what's proprietary, what's unique about that company. IP is a critical consideration for prospective investors of technology companies. And I'd like to just share a story uh, from my time as a VC. Uh, there was a time in my career when I had found a great Alberta-based company uh, that was a spin-off of one of Alberta's post-secondary institutions. And it was a really exciting team with really great technology. And they had met all of my investment criteria. I was very eager to work with them to help them commercialize their technology and to grow their business so that they could create jobs and build something really exciting here in Alberta. But that deal fell apart because of the IP policies at the academic institution they were a uh, spin-off of. Those policies had made them uninvestable. And these entrepreneurs were held back from raising capital from investors that were willing to cut a check. This example highlights how important government policy on intellectual property is. If we get it right, we remove barriers. We uh, allow innovative startups to attract investment and to grow their business. But if we fail, we stifle innovation and we stop them. And these innovators will instead develop their ideas outside of Alberta. We know that other provinces like Ontario and BC are considering ways to modernize their IP policies. We're here today to tell Albertans that we will move faster than every other province to ensure that Alberta is the best place to develop their intellectual property and to create technology companies. Long before the pandemic, we promised Albertans that their government would be laser focused on creating jobs and growing the economy. This promise is more important now than ever. And our efforts in the technology sector that we've talked about here today are just one more example of how we are keeping that promise. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, uh, Minister Glubish, and to Minister Schweitzer as well, um, and to uh, Exerge Energy for allowing us to be here at, uh, on the uh, University of Calgary Research Park, uh, which I think highlights the important role that our post-secondary institutions play in helping to drive uh, research and innovation forward in the province. Uh, indeed, when Minister Schweitzer and I talk about um, the future of the innovation ecosystem within the province of Alberta and the important role it can play in helping to strengthen our economy, create more jobs and create a better quality of life for all Albertans, it is absolutely uh, critical and essential that our post-secondary institutions will and, and must play an important role uh, in achieving that, that goal. Uh, as Minister Glubish alluded to a few moments ago, our universities and colleges and post-secondary institutions are home to some of the very best and latest groundbreaking research, uh, new ideas and new discoveries. And our focus here today is to ensure that we are doing everything possible as a government and in partnership with other industry organizations to ensure that those new ideas, those new research discoveries translate as much as possible into new businesses and into new startups. Of course, the benefits of doing that uh, are many. Uh, but for example, this helps to create and uh, new industries and diversify our economy. As well, this also brings incredible value 
to our students so that they can be exposed to some of the very latest research and development activities happening within a particular sector. Uh, and this is why this uh, is an important priority, not just now, but something that we in advanced education and in partnership with jobs, economy, and innovation have already been looking at on a preliminary basis over the last few months. As you may know, uh, in advanced education, we are undertaking a comprehensive review of our post-secondary system. We're calling it Alberta 2030, which is designed to articulate a 10-year vision for the future of our post-secondary system. And a key objective of this vision is to strengthen the commercialization of research at our post-secondary institutions. Over the last few months, we've been holding interviews, roundtable discussions, and other engagement opportunities focused on the commercialization of research and other elements that are important to post-secondary education. So with that, uh, I will turn things over to Sandy to say a few words, uh, but again, just want to reiterate the significant importance that our post-secondary institutions will play in helping to drive innovation uh, and, and lead our economic recovery. So thank you again to Minister Schweitzer and to others for allowing us to be here today. Sandy, happy to turn things over to you. Thank you very much. Sandy Gilbert, pleased to be here as a representative of our innovation sector in Alberta to stand behind the government and say, right on, we need to step up, step out, have courage, and do bold things. You know, it's an interesting stage we're at in Calgary and at Edmonton and in Alberta today. We have lots of great companies like Exergy right here in our room that have pivoted to do ventilators. Eight months ago, would you have thought you were going to be doing that? No. But this is the technology and the skills and the talent that we have in our province that can address all sorts of challenges that we're going to see today and going forward um, throughout Canada and around the world. I represent two entities today, Intergen, which is a, a group of prominent Calgarians and senior business leaders that have got together and said, we need to bring together that experienced talent with our ambitious entrepreneurs to help them navigate this crazy world of scale and growing and global opportunities. And secondly, I represent the Angel Capital Organization in Canada that funds a lot of these early stage companies with their own checks out of their own bank accounts with their own mentoring and their own skills to help these companies get to the stage where they can attract that venture capital from someone like Energen or Nate, where you used to be, and then grow their businesses globally. So I'm here to say right on, Alberta. I'm pleased to see that we're taking a step forward and embracing the entrepreneurial spirit, the DNA, the risk taking, and the experience that this province has. And I know we can lead the can Canada and globally when we're trying to do this. So kudos to you guys. Thanks for having me here. All right. So in addition to ministers Schweitzer, Glubish, and Nicolaides, we have Sandy Gilbert, CEO of Intergen Chair. Uh, sorry, CEO of Intergen and Chair of National Angel Capital Organization, and Billy Rideout, President of Exergy Solutions. Uh, operator, if you could please put through the first caller. Sorry, our first question is from Tyler Dawson with the National Post. Go ahead, Tyler. Hey, um, I just wanted to, to ask, uh, like, broadly speaking, uh, what concrete measures are we going to see moving forward here? So as you've seen in other provinces like Ontario and British Columbia, as it relates to intellectual property, which then fosters the ideas that you can build commercialized companies and grow jobs, there is a race right now going on in the province of Alberta. We met this week with the leading tech minds in this province, from people that are developing AI, machine learning, people that are developing you know, you know, different products that are getting us food through our phones. We met with them this week, and the strategic advice that they gave to us is that their businesses move faster than you can go develop government policy. And we said, challenge accepted. Thank you very much. We're going to make sure that we can move as fast as humanly possible, faster than any other government in the country. And what they wanted to see from us is that we, whether or not we were going to stand by that. So that's why we're putting our flag in the ground today to make sure that we send that signal to the tech sector, to the innovators, to the markets, that Alberta has heard them, Alberta is listening, and we're going to move fast. Okay, do you have a follow-up? No, I don't. All right, operator, can you put through the next uh, caller? Next is Bill Coffin with the Calgary Herald. Go ahead. 
Yes, uh, Minister Schweitzer, uh, good afternoon. Um, just changing up this thing up a little bit. Um, there's some concern about uh, commercial evictions in the province uh, due to the pandemic. And uh, the Canadian Federation of Independent Business says that Alberta's, Alberta's the only province in Western Canada that doesn't forbid these, doesn't have a law to block these commercial evictions. Um, uh, would the province be looking at extending Bill 23 to, uh, to, you know, to, to forbid these kinds of things? So now I've heard some of the concerns raised by the Canadian Federation of Independent Business around this point. Uh, my office is going to be reaching out to them to see what their concerns are, see what further steps that we can do to make sure that we know that we have the supports there for our small businesses. And what you'll also see here today is that we're actually putting in place a parliamentary secretary focused on small businesses, a parliamentary secretary focused on tourism as well. Because of this expanded mandate with the ministry that I'm now taking on, we have to make sure that we continue to listen to our small business owners, continue to be there in real time for them as they have challenges as we move forward out of this pandemic. So Martin Long, the MLA, uh, one of our colleagues is taking on that role as the new parliamentary secretary. He's gonna be engaging with me in, with, those new, with those small businesses across Alberta and I look forward to him being part of our team. The hey, operator, can you put through the next caller? All right, our next caller is Chris Varco with Calgary Herald. Go ahead, Chris. Sorry. Hi, yeah, this is a question uh, for Billy Rido. Billy, I'm, I'm just wondering if you can talk a little bit about what are the challenges for you to continue to grow here in the next year or two, particularly given the economic terrain that we're facing? And secondly, can you tell me, do you need the energy sector to come back in order to fuel that growth? Or do you think you can do it without the energy sector seeing any strong growth in the next year or two? Yeah, we, I guess we have two levels of focus. One is, is definitely small businesses and helping them, you know, in the diversification of the economy with totally new ideas and new sectors. But our, our main focus has been to date is really getting this, uh, this energy sector of what's, what a good friend of mine called a, a double black swan. Right, so it's 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 a tough time, and, and we have a lot of know-how. So at Extrogy, we have a, a, a full gamut. It's a one-stop shop under one roof of process engineering, to mechanical engineering, to fabrication and testing and lab experimentation. So that's what makes us agile. I mean, kind of giving out our secret DNA here, but that's what I, I'm willing to share that because I think other companies in in, in the province need to try to follow that model. Uh, energy spe sector in particular. Uh, absolutely. Um, if we don't uh, come in and, and help them out, uh, what we're going to see is is people leaving the province, uh, all the skilled labor leaving the province. So I think it's a big industry. It has potential if we can help it uh, to track volumes of jobs and kind of a stopgap measure. Uh, but I, I think it's, it's going to be a parallel path. We shouldn't like pick one strategy. In, in Agile, you often pick many strategies, have a leading, a couple leading strategies, but then have other sub strategies to really to really achieve that. And do you have a follow-up, Chris? Yes, for Minister Spicer, I wonder if you can talk about what the $75 million is going to be going towards with the uh, investment and growth strategy, and what changes are you planning specifically with the international trade offices? So on that front there, I mean, more announcements to come, Chris. So this is the first of many that we're going to be doing here uh, in part of our recovery plan. Uh, but the one that we wanted to talk about today for part of that 75 million is $6 million a year investment into Invest Alberta. So you and I should probably grab a coffee one day and we'll walk you through how this business development is going to work. It's probably a bit more of a longer discussion than you can do in a sound bite. But effectively what it's doing is how can we support existing platforms, so your big four accounting firms that have international presence, your, your law firms here in Alberta that have international presence and national presence, our financial institutions that have national and international exposure as well, as well as smart businesses here in Alberta that want to access capital outside of the province or internationally or want to grow outside. How do we work with them? They're the ones that truly know their business development plans. They're the ones that are in the C-suite. They're the ones that are in there making the deals, getting the financing, getting these transactions done. And sometimes that's more my corporate head on here, but why does that matter to Albertans? Because that's gonna create investment, it's gonna create jobs, it's gonna create opportunities here in the province of Alberta. There's a whole bunch more pieces that go along into this, but you know, we as a government can't hire people that are in the mix of different deals. We can't pay on that scale. But how do we support the people that are working on those transactions to make sure they have a real-time conduit, concierge service, so if they're having barriers, 
that they're finding out that there's something happening in Europe where there's a misperception on what Alberta is all about. How do we address that in real time? How do we make sure that those investors have confidence in the province of Alberta? Is there a policy shift that they're seeing or trend that they're seeing around the world in real time that we may need to address? As I was mentioning earlier on, businesses are moving faster than governments around the world. Alberta has to have the most innovative government possible. Invest Alberta is a piece of that solution to make sure we can get real-time feedback and provide real-time solutions to the business community to make sure Alberta is at the forefront. When people think, I want to invest, they think, I want to be in Alberta. We have time for two more questions. Operator, can you put through the next caller? Next is Safe Kaiser with 660 News. Go ahead, Safe. Yes, good afternoon. Minister Schweitzer, you keep saying the government needs to be uh, faster and more innovative when it comes to policy, but what I'm not completely understanding is because, I mean, obviously there are a lot of different uh, tech city hubs across the world. Why would a tech company decide to come to Alberta and instead of, let's say, Montreal or San Francisco or Vancouver. The feedback that we're hearing, and we had an amazing conversation about this last night with some of the tech leaders in the province, bar none. And their advice to us was that you need to make sure that we have an amazing, sorry, let me step back. We have an amazing foundation in the province of Alberta. We have the foundation of companies like Exergy Solutions that can pivot and develop ventilators in a matter of months. We have leading minds when it comes to AI and machine learning. And that's the solution right there to solve million dollar problems for government for how to be more efficient in healthcare. How do you be more efficient in delivering services across government? Not just for us, but also how do you be more efficient in businesses? You've seen strategic pivots here in Alberta and around the world. So we have an amazing foundation in Alberta to grow. And we need, as a government, need to make sure we can keep up with that. We're seen by some, and this is just feedback that we're receiving, that we, don't, we haven't been as welcoming as we could. We, they've even seen by some to say, you need to move faster and send a signal to innovators and technology companies that you want them in the province of Alberta. That was the feedback we received just last night. And here we are today making this announcement, putting that flag in the ground that we've heard you, we've listened to you, we're going to make sure we pivot and move faster, and we're now going to move faster than any other government in the country, get there before them to make sure we have the right framework on the ground here in Alberta so that they want to be here, they want to grow here. And I'm actually excited about some of the announcements that we have coming. That you'll see the whole picture here over this fall as we roll out our innovation strategy sector. But there's a whole bunch of more announcements. This is one piece. This is the leading piece in that technology-driven strategy that you're going to see over the fall. There's going to be another announcement tomorrow, too, that we're excited about. Great. And, Operator, can you please put through the last caller? No follow question is Tom Vernon with Global News Edmonton. Go ahead, Tom. Hi, Minister. Thanks for taking my question. We keep saying, putting the flag in the ground, we're going to be moving faster. These consultations, when do we hope to have this framework in place? Are we talking months? Are we talking spring? What are we looking at here? As we're planning and trying to see if we can get this done as fast as humanly possible. I always try to challenge our guys to see if we can get it done by Christmas, but you know what? We're going to move it as fast as possible. Other jurisdictions aren't talking about until you know, later into 2021. They're, they're not focused on recovery right now. Alberta is focused on making sure we have jobs to recover. We have the path forward for Albertans because they want to know that they have a future in Alberta. They want to know that they have a job and opportunity in Alberta. We are laser focused on that right now to make sure we get this policy matrix done as fast as humanly possible, faster than the other jurisdictions. They're talking about 21, sometime later into 21. We want to get there before them. That's our mandate. That's the direction. And we're going to be working with Minister Glubus and Minister Nicolaitis to get that done. All right. Thank you. Thanks, everyone.